Hello my beautiful and lovely gamers, my name is Jonal, today I'm covering Global Esports vs Giant Lux, we're talking, taking a look specifically on how Global Esports plays this quad DPS, you know, solo heal, solo tank, right, versus floats or Winston, <coughs> well, goats with Winston, right, which is a lot of people call floats. How they are snowballing and destroying them so hard that this comment was put on the Twitch. I think that's an amazing, funny comment. Um, so yeah, we're going to cover that today. Hopefully that's going to help you guys uh, understand a little bit more about game sense and so on. How you make strategies and so on. Now, with no further ado, let's really just begin. So... Let's take a look at the differences. So what is the win conditions here of Global Esports? Well, it's quite simple. You want to play around Goats. Goats, or this is this is still Goats, even though it's uh, with Winston. So I'm just going to call it Goats, even though some people would like me to call it Floats. Goats has a very strong main group. And there's no no really other team composition than Goats that can counter Goats in main, in main kind of main group strength, right? So if you run Ryan versus Goats versus Goats, as I've said before, Goats is kind of like a train. You either run your own train into the train, right, which is Goats versus Goats, or you play around it and dissemble the train from the outside, which is what this team composition is built around. If you notice the DPSs, there's some, um, or the team composition, there's some kind of pattern. You have a very mobile tank, very survivable tank, so you can't just lock him down. Sombra, very mobile, can't lock her down, also hacks and pretty good damage. Uh, and the MP, of course, which is like devastating for clunked up, very strong, grouped up together. Tracer, which is again has a lot of damage and is very hard to lock down, a lot of movement. Farah, which has had a lot of spam damage, specifically AoE and like a lot of pressure on the map. And again, it's very difficult to lock down, especially when you have a Mercy to pocket. And then you have Hansel, which, while he is still difficult to lock down, he's not as difficult to lock down as the rest of the team, but he is uh, still difficult to lock down and has a lot of damage. So it's a very, very... And all of these are also, to a certain extent, very good at aerial denial. Right? You have Farah, which is very good at aerial denial, pressuring an area. Right? Remember how space creation and pressure works in Norwatch? Sp creating space and uh, creating map pressure is really just to have damage on that area. So if you have... A uh, let's say that you so for example this Winston, if this Winston is on this high ground on this ledge, he's denying this area, and the reason that he's denying that area is because if this Hansel walks past, that's a lot of damage, and the Hansel will die. Right? The only way to push this Winston away, if now we're not talking goat, right? Is for example to send your own Winston or whoever, right? To or for example our Diva in a, in an example to damage him to make him move back again, right? Or, for example, to make a Pharaoh to spam that area from range and make him kind of move back and therefore give us that space, right? That's how we move pieces around an Overwatch um, in a very kind of like basic brute force, you know, binary way of thinking. So the way that this is going to be played is quite easy. The win condition is to deny the space of the goats, right? Make sure that they don't have a lot of room to work with, right? And then we pressure, essentially you weaken them, you force out abilities, you force, uh, you force them low, you force resources and so on. Look for an opportunity, which is number three, and if possible, take that opportunity for a pick. So it's very much, again, slowly but surely, can the deassembling, kind of poking the angry bear, and then running away if anything goes bad. And therefore you have to play to a very specific way. The first plan is going to be that the, you know, this goat's composition or is going to be playing on the top of the high ground, right? From the top of this high ground, they have a lot going for them. They can potentially dive and control areas. They have a lot of high ground control, make it difficult for the Pharah. And they, in general, have a lot going for them, range and control. And the fact that they, on this high ground, they can respond, again, therefore, they control, right? They can respond to practically anything that goes on here and anything that goes on here. Um, this was supposed to be like kind of here, right? So anything that's here, it's very easily responded to by the goats, or is at least easily responded. So the first thing is going to be remove these guys from that high ground, which is going to be the first thing that's going to happen. You're going to force them down for the high ground, and they're going to fall back in here. And now the pieces start aligning. The tracer will be blinking in and around here early, right? We're helping to press these guys off and rotating and coming in from that point 
from here. You're gonna send your Hanzo straight from main to help remove, and then he would ideally like to play up here. That's not gonna work, because he's gonna p push over here as the float competition look at him, and therefore they're gonna punish him for it. Um, but he's gonna then be playing up here. The Pharah is very quickly gonna establish a lot of damage. Again, you wanna lock them in here. If they are not taking damage, they are allowed to all of a sudden start to reposition themselves and go out and build up resources. So when they drop, we start setting pressure. The Pharah and the Moses is gonna fly over them. The Hammond is gonna come in here and imagine what would happen this is kind of very important if the hammond had been here and the goats team composition had tried to stop him from going through here like trying to somehow hold this choke that would open up space for the hand so if they just let him in he can just rotate through here and start slamming and fighting them over here so if, they, if they're trying to deny this part side of the map you have a hammer that can quickly slam and deny these areas, right? And this is the response of that. The Sombra is going to come in here. And of course, she's looking for a hack. And she's also just in general looking for damage to build a BMP. And that is going to be the general play style. And it's going to be the same formula all over again. Deny them space, right? Right? Force them into an area, right? With, by denying them space, you normally force them into a specific area where we can start poking and deassembling them. And then three, look for opportunities and take to some opportunities, which is also why this is a very, this DPS comp is very individually heavy because one, you are, you have to be very active all the time to try to give our damage specifically against very traditional goats, which has a little bit more sustain onto it with a Ryan because of the shield, right? You so you have to be able to allow a lot of pressure to keep them there to make sure they're not allowed to retake their space, but you're also not allowed to feed. If you start losing players, like the Hanzo gets picked too early, or the Farah gets zoned or killed too early, right? Then you then you start kind of losing control over their team composition, right? And that's where you can start being less effective. That is where the Ghost Comp can start building ultimates. And this is really a really good way to snowball. So let's really take a look at how this is played over here. I want you guys to take a look at Bubble Kitty's ult charge. And also uh, Little Rax, I'm very sorry if I pronounced that name wrong has some really fucking cool place but yeah let's just watch okay so so it's pretty easy you come out here the tracer's gonna go here again just pressure them winston go through the choke right the hands are gonna come in here they're gonna help deny everyone is gonna start denying right the tracer blinks over and the enemy team immediately gives the high ground because they don't want to get too weak too early right the Pharah helps deny a rotation so they can't really start rotating their players or whatnot and also remember by little racks and so on playing over here and taking this side of the map it also forces them to lose control of this so they can't like have a senyata over here or put like a senyata uh, further back to kind of try to zone with them or anything like that they need to try to stick their team composition together much much easier by keep by forcing your players to kind of deny big sides a uh, big chunks of the map it also kind of limits by by the way that they push and rotate it's yes allowing them action right here everyone can react to almost everything especially if the hanzo is here right and the sombra is here and right this tracer is some for some reason up here right all of a sudden we can react to anything that these guys want to do and at the same time but there's no way that you can set up a defensive over here so the Sinyata could not start over here if you had done that right for, for example you want him to be safer if you stand here and then you had rotated this way right then there would be a big 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 chance that him and the Farah very early could pick him off. Even if he tried to rotate back down to his team, there's a very big chance that he would get picked off super early, or it would cost the defending team a lot of resources to try to peel him back into safety. For example, they wanted to defend the health pack room, right? So, very good way of locking them under here. He, here is... Uh, uh, um, Sion Flux is going to try to do this rotation. You're going to see him. He's going to get pressured. And therefore, he can't do that rotation correctly or something at least happen. So, he is forced to play up on this high ground. And again, this is where all the pressure. Again, look how there's already 40% ult charge on Bubble Kitty. That's a lot of pressure from one Farad. It's just denying this space. The Tracer goes in and just starts helping with damage. And this you can kind of see where, right? These guys, they are trying their best to play outside of this area and try to claim back the space. But you have a Farah here. You have a Hansel that's getting his space. Um, the Mercy here. Then the Tracer comes in for here. You have a Sombra coming in for here. You have a Hammond coming in for here. And all of a sudden, you are slowly but surely getting surrounded. You're slowly but surely losing a resource. And you're going to see that snowball happen very fast. Slam comes through, a lot of damage going through, right? They man, we, Bubble Kitty managed to take up a Senyata, right? We they see on Flocks, which was kind of the the only like the serious quote unquote weak link, the weak dive link of the team, gets pressured out and therefore dies. And now it's just clean up, really, right? The damage has already come in, so this side is lost already for a long time ago, as the damage came in way too hard, way too fast, right? 
And what's going to happen is, well, we're going to have, there's going to be, now you're going to also notice this. Again, look at this. This is going to be very good aggression, right? They force them back, force them in here, kept them there, weakened them super fast and just went for executions, right? Not allowing them time to re to use their AOEs and their single target to heal back up or anything like that or get back bubble cooldowns and shield cooldowns and matrix and so on, right? Not allowing that, but same as now. Now they're going to continue that aggression. Look at Xenofly, he's 41% now. So now look how fast, his, how close he's going to be to his ultimate before the team starts. These two are just capping, right? And all of the other DPSs, so on is really just pushing up, right? Uh, Little Rax is sitting up here, preparing for a dive over, right? And again, just notice here, right before the fight, it's gonna start 56 now. He's recalled, now he's gonna set up back in, right? You can actually see him coming up here, right? You can actually see him coming up the stairs over here to take out the two tanks, setting up the defense. Don't worry, I'm gonna cover second point as well um, in Set Banana. Right, and again, 67, 75, 85, and then he backed, right? 85 from 40, from about 40% all the way up to 85. Now the push is starting to come through here, right? That's really fucking good. On top of the fact that we are 98, we're going to have barrage, pull spawn that's going to come in with that. And again, a lot of this is area denial ultimates on this team, right? You can you can very quickly just delete anyone that stands in close where the Pharah is going to be. You have a pull spawn, which is more of a stick, though. You have... Mines, which can deny one big area, which is like the def which is like the really hard definition of an air denial. Um, wh whenever Hanzo gets a dragon strike, which he hasn't, he hasn't been as effective because of the angle that he had to take on his first point. But if he gets dragon strike, of course, that's a big air denial. And the same with Sombra. If you clutter up on an area, we're gonna hack you all, right? And all of this is very heavy area denial, which works when you deny them the space that they're getting denied. Now, second point here is gonna be quite. Um, very similar playstyle, just a little bit different executed. This is about the defense that, as I understand, again, I don't have a top point of view, so I kind of have to look through first person and try to find out, like, all the different positions. But this is approximate how I'm expecting them to play. Saying so the hammer through main, same with the Pharah and the Mercy, they, they, both of the, them are going to fly through main, because from here, they can just fly very close and either splash in here or splash deny this area here. Right, and again, the, the whole defense here is set up to the fact that the enemy team wants to back off into this area. This is kind of their safe spot that they want to play in. That's that's been their choice. So okay, by doing that, we send our tracer over here. We now have some. If they start backing off with the scent, right, that's he's easily killed. We'll send the Pharah or uh, and the Mercy to play close to this building to shoot down again, forcing the Saria back so that there's no space on the objective. Right, forcing these guys back, right, helping maybe to zone out the monkey, maybe help zone out the diva. Right, we have a Hanzo who's probably playing somewhere in main, who probably again wants the enemy team to rotate like this if possible, so he can get that nice line of sight. It's going to be a little bit difficult for him. And then you have a Sombra that can hack and then hammer setting off for slams, right? And it's going to be very much the same, right? And you have these two people that can very quickly help to shut down the point, right? If the Winston goes for the for deny for trying to test objective, there's hacks and so on, but in general, it's still the same, the nice space. Put them into an area and then start all stacking them in this example or just in general start slamming and dealing targeted damage now there's going to come a beautiful pulse bomb out here right again the ferris is just spamming and shooting it's come a beautiful beautiful pulse bomb. you can already see again that they have already forced the winston down the diva is trying to deny this Farah a little bit which is doing her job trying to kind of slow down the Farah. but the Farah is going to push in here and start pressuring onto the Saria, right? Who's again, he almost killed the, the Lucio, gonna try to deny, kill the, uh, the Saria. And notice this beautiful pulse bump. It's actually just, I'm just gonna replay that just one more time, just because it's such a beautiful pulse bump. Coming in there, dealing a lot of damage. And again, you see now what's happened. The Winston had to leap, had to move, the Winston had to move over here. The, Fa the Saria had to move over here. The Diva had to move over here. The Lucius is here. The Brig is here. And again, we have they have managed to claim. They have managed to claim. Let me see. All of the space. Against once more, right? All of these guys are trying to send or kill, right? All of these guys are, are forced over here onto the low ground. Over to the high grounds. Whoever can hold those, right? And now it's about to get, you know, cluttered in. But now we're also going to notice a really nice um, pair. Right now there's space for the Hanzo. And this is really where it's GG. Unless the defending team have ultimate here to push out and start working, then this GG. Um, 
one of the things that's really nice here and what you're gonna know is the way that they count that they use the bowers is one they're gonna send the bowers over here they're gonna use cover to try to deny as much los so that you don't get shot by someone that's not your target to make sure that the ferris survives right because again you want to make sure you continuously keep the spam advantage and there is a big part of this right so there's no stall coming in or any or any chance of outplayability on the same time the hack is gonna come like this it's gonna be barrage hack so the diva is gonna get hacked to make sure uh, this is hacked right just even though this that's ultimate but whatever she's gonna get hacked by the sombra to just make sure right that there's no way that this diva can deny and take out our pharah right and that's again another really well coordinated collapse the same with the slam with all the damage from the so on this is very much the same you do here you come in with the barrage right the monkey flies up he takes a lot of damage and now again it's pretty much gg right now with now there's an emp ready there's mines has been dropped here again to again they all got forced into this barrage comes from behind mines comes here including a cc right they can't play here they're getting barrage from behind and again it's complete map denial and it's practically impossible in those situations to do a comeback so it's a really good snowball back on top of the fact that now no one can contest through this way without really dying it's meaning that they all have to go through one area choke we still have emp uh, coming up with dragon swipe which is not a big area denial so you can dragon like this area you have valkyrie coming up right so you can keep your mercy alive and chain heal the team so again it's gg well played there's no way that this can be recontested and i believe that again this is a really just a really like kind of textbook but a really good way to understand this is the win conditions that we are running with um it's the win conditions of our team right we deny the space we push them in we keep pressure on them we set up then we capture capitalize on whatever opportunity is if that's a slam if that's an old combo get that shit out at the same time we are we have certain players that are looking for picks right for example we have a tracer that is yeah of course trying to pressure tanks and so on but also in general looking for kills onto stuff, stuff like sinyadas and so on and again i think it's a really really just textbook thing so i hope that this guys uh, help you guys out understanding a little bit better on how these kind of quad dps set up do you like this kind of video so liking and subscribing bell notification always of course helps out the channel and so on sharing this wherever you guys can of course also helps out kind of spread this topic so people start understanding a little bit more the nuances of um, competitive overwatch and so on so as always guys please take care of it says a positive i love you guys very very much and as always guys my name is Jordan, and you guys keep the enemy in your crosshair I'm